Even as a child, I was really curious about things. I kept wanting to dismantle stuff around me, so my parents nicknamed me the technician. With his insatiable curiosity, Carl Leo laid the foundation for a billion dollar business with OLEDs. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. Whether it's brilliant displays or ultra-thin TV screens, OLEDs lie behind them. And that goes for half the world's smartphones, too. Understanding the world from the bottom up, that's what shapes his life. In 1980, Carl Leo starts studying physics in Freiburg. He's fascinated by semiconductors, which he got to know in solar cell research. Exploring their secrets will determine his life. The word semiconductor sounds a bit like half a thing, but what's exciting about them is that you can control conductivity. Metal always conducts well, an insulator always conducts poorly. Semiconductors can simply be switched on and off. This enables unprecedented applications for electronics, and Carl Leo makes use of them. In 1993, he takes his expertise to Dresden University, where he still teaches today. His focus is on organic semiconductors, materials which, in contrast to inorganic semiconductors such as silicon, are made of carbon. In powder or liquid form, they can be flexibly processed and produced at low cost. When I started with organic semiconductors, they were still considered exotic materials, physically interesting and some new phenomena, but no one believed they had any real practical application. Carl Leo did, though. With his work group, he begins to systematically research an exciting property of organic semiconductors. When an electric current is applied, they emit light. For this purpose, several wafer-thin layers are vapor deposited onto a substrate, like glass, for example. First, a transparent conductor, the positive pole. Then, layers made up of different organic semiconductors. And finally, a reflective metal layer is added, the negative pole. If an electric current is now applied, electrons flow in from the negative electrode and travel through the semiconductor to the center. From the positive electrode, so-called holes, that is, gaps where electrons are missing, also migrate to the center. In the middle layer, the electrons and electron holes combine. In doing so, they emit energy in the form of light and in a different color depending on the semiconductor material. Organic LEDs like these emit soft planar light and are 200 times thinner than a single strand of human hair. But they still have huge technological deficiencies. They need far too much electricity. At first, almost everything was wrong about organic semiconductors. The efficiency of the components was poor, and so were their lifespan and functionality. So, in 1995, Leo starts looking around for new and better organic semiconductors. The problem is that there are millions of possible candidates. For months, he and his team test different connections. Their trick, adding tiny amounts of foreign material to their semiconductors. This so-called doping process integrates foreign atoms into the crystal lattice of the semiconductor. Atoms that bring additional free electrons and electron holes along with them. This boosts the conductivity. Carl Leo's perseverance is rewarded. And then two students built organic light-emitting diodes and compared a doped one with an undoped one. The undoped one had an operating voltage of 25 volts and the doped one was 5 volts. When I saw the results, it really was very gratifying. Doping is the breakthrough. It improves conductivity by a factor of one million. Three years later, the team finds the perfect combination of materials. Many of his research colleagues can hardly believe it, until Carl Leo makes use of some potatoes to build an extremely weak battery. If I connect things up here with a bit of luck, this here should light up green. Very nice. So the physics is there, and we can see that it really is shining quite brightly with these four potatoes. <laughs> Leo and his team have solved the problem of efficiency, and suddenly there are unimagined possibilities. 
In 2001, Leo founds the Nova Lead Company together with Martin Pfeiffer and Jan Blochwitz and files several patent applications. The passionate researcher becomes a successful entrepreneur. In 2013, the company is bought by Samsung for 260 million euros. Because these OLEDs need only half as much electricity as the competition, for smartphones in particular, they're a key component. So they're integrated into displays worldwide, each one consisting of millions of microscopically small light-emitting diodes with semiconductors from Dresden. Of course, if you've found things that have application significance and you want to exploit them commercially, then patents are essential. Today, Dresden is a hotspot in the organic semiconductor industry. By 2024, the market is predicted to be 163 billion euros. And OLEDs are only one area of application. Instead of using electricity to produce light, organic semiconductors can also use light to produce electricity. Carl Leo uses this ability to make flexible and thin organic solar films. And again, he founds a company with fellow researchers, Heliatech. In Dresden, the world's largest factory for ultralight, sustainable and flexible organic solar cell films will produce millions of square meters from 2021 onwards. And Leo is already working on the next big thing, bioelectronics. For intelligent implants, for instance, that simply dissolve inside the body after successful deployment. Since I'm a curious person, I want to see new things. It's nice to have brought things to successful completion, of course, but what's really interesting is what hasn't been understood yet. What's most exciting about science are the open questions. And thanks to his curiosity, the former technician now has a new nickname. In the newspapers, Karl Leo is known as the leading light of organics. <laughs>